From Las Vegas to Macau, casinos had become battlefields in which every spin, every card, and every number could be the difference between debt and wealth. Gambling refers to the wagering of money or something of value. These objects of value, often called stakes, were bet on an event with an uncertain outcome. Gambling dates back to as far as 2300 BC in China where gambling houses were widespread. Betting on fighting animals was common during this period. Casinos, literally translating in Italian to small house or social club, are facilities that house and accommodate a variety of gambling activities. More specifically, the roulette has become the hallmark of any casino. While the origin of the game is unknown, it is widely believed that Blaise Pascal invented the wheel in the mid-17th century. A common strategy for playing involves increasing the bets as the gambler loses. However, in the case of a losing streak, this involves risking a large sum of money. But when it comes to the dichromatic wheel, how can we win? Is it really worth gambling on a roulette wheel or are you better off playing the slots? Before we get into the nitty gritty, we must first explain basic probability. So first, we begin with the definition of probability. A probability is the measure of the likelihood of something happening. In other words, it is the ratio between favorable events and the number of total events. Events are defined as a discrete sample space as a collection of sample points. A sample space is the set that contains all possible sample points. For example, when we flip a coin, we have two possibilities, or sample points. The flip will show heads or it will show tails. These two, these two possibilities make up the sample space. Each flip represents an event, which will be one of the two possible sample points, heads or tails. We can find the probability of flipping a heads or a tails by examining the ratio between the favorable events and the total number of events. First, we have to mention that events are assigned a probability of occurring, and this probability is bounded by zero and one. The closer a probability is to zero, the lower the chance of occurrence. Similarly, if a probability is closer to 1, it has a larger chance of occurring. A probability of 0 represents no possibility of occurring, while a probability of 1 me means that the outcome will always occur. Additionally, a probability cannot be negative. Going back to the case of the coin flip, we can assign a favorable event to be a flip that results in heads. Results in heads. We have two total events, flip that results in heads, plus flip that results in tails. Assuming a fair coin, we can then determine the probability of our favorable event occurring to be one half. Going more into the gambling aspect of probability, a common topic that comes up is independence of events. Independence refers to when one event has no effect on the probability of another event. To keep it consistent, we will refer back to our coin flip example. If we flip the coin and it turns up heads, Flipping it once more is not affected by our first flip. In other words, the result from each trial does not affect the next. So what does independence relate to when you're at a casino? A common misconception is that the more you lose, the more likely you will win. This is commonly known as the gambler's fallacy, or the Monte Carlo fallacy. When you're on a severe losing streak, people often believe that previous failures will create an increased probability of success on future attempts. This goes back to the definition of independence because past events do not change the probability that certain events will occur in the future. Expectation allows us to predict the expected outcome of an experiment. Formally, it is the average of the possible values a variable can take. These values are weighted according to the probability of that event occurring. Again, this can be modeled through the coin flip example. If we offer $100 for a coin flip that results in heads and $0 for a coin flip that results in tails, we can calculate the player's expected gain. The two possible outcomes of this experiment are a $100 gain or a $0 gain. We need this information along with the probability of each outcome occurring to find the expectation. Conveniently, we determined earlier that a heads result or a tails result both have a probability of one half. Now to find the expectation, we calculate the weighted average by multiplying both probabilities with their respective gain and adding them together. For this video, we will be focusing on the American Roulette Wheel. The standard American Roulette Wheel consists of 38 equally pocketed divisions where the numbers range from 1 to 36 with the addition of 0 and double zero. Numbers 1 to 36 are alternately colored in red and black, while the zero spaces are colored green. 
The gambler's objective is to predict which pocket the roulette ball will land in. The bets are made on a roulette table. Once the bets are made, the dealer spins the wheel while the small ivory ball rolls in the opposite motion. Once the ball lands in a pocket, the winning number is determined and the respective players receive a payout. Since there exists a wide variety of bets, we will be focusing on just a few. There are two groups of bets in roulette, inside and outside. An inside bet is a bet on specific numbers or combinations of numbers. Some examples of inside bets are straight up, which is a bet on a single number, with a payoff of 35 to 1. A split, which is a bet on two adjacent numbers, with a payoff of 17 to 1. A street, which is a bet on three numbers, with a payoff of 11 to 1. A corner, which is a bet on four adjacent numbers, with a payoff of 8 to 1. And a line, which is a bet on six adjoining numbers, with a payoff of 5 to 1. There is usually a minimum on the inside bets. An outside bet is a bet on large groups of numbers. The first bet is a dozen, which is a bet on the numbers 1 through 12, 13 through 24, or 25 through 36. A dozen has a payoff of 2 to 1. There is also a column bet, which is betting on one of three specific columns to have the number selected. Column bets have a payoff of 2 to 1. There is a red or black bet, which is betting on if the number is red or black. This type of bet has a payoff of 1 to 1. There is also an odd or even bet, which is betting on if the number is odd or even. This bet has a payoff of 1 to 1. A small or large bet is a bet on numbers on 1 through 18 or 19 to 36. This bet has a payoff of 1 to 1. There is usually a minimum on outside bets. The minimum for inside bets and outside bets are separate. The house has an advantage for roulette due to the inclusion of the green zero and double zero. For example, the player's chances of winning the red or black, or even or odd, is 18 out of 38, because the zeros are not included in most bets with groups. The straight up bet will pay 35 to 1, even though there are 38 numbers to choose from. The house has an approximate 5.3% advantage. We will look at a few examples to show the expected payoff on different types of bets. Our first example is an inside bet. To keep things simple, we will say the inside minimum is $1 and we can choose one number. We choose the number 5 and bet $1. There are 38 numbers the ball could land on. The probability of landing on 5 is 1 out of 38. We multiply 1 out of 38, the probability of landing on 5, times 35, the payoff of winning, and 37 over 38, the probability of not landing on 5, times negative 1, the payoff of losing. And the payoff for this type of bet is negative 0.053. This means the payoff is in the house's favor. Our second example is an outside bet, specifically the red or black bet. We bet on red for $1. The probability of landing on red is 18 over 38. We multiply 18 over 38, the probability of a red number, times 1, the payoff of winning, plus 20 over 38, the probability of not a red number, times negative 1, the payoff of losing. The expected payoff of this type of bet is once again negative 0.053. This also means that it is in the house's favor. This expected payoff formula can be applied to any inside or outside bet. The payoff is always negative and in favor of the casino or house. So you might be thinking, how is it that there is a negative payoff for all of the bets? 
yet people still play this game anyways. This relates back to the gambler's fallacy. For example, just because you win $35 once on a $1 bet and it's thrilling, does not mean in the long run it'll pay off in your favor in the future. Have fun, but just be careful, it's not a safe way to make money.